Chris Oliver once again. Um, <clears throat> okay, first of all, I owe you half an apology. Uh, because this is the video I should have made first. I should have explained uh, my logical path to how I got here instead of just jumping straight to the conclusion. Because I realize the conclusion sounds insane. I mean, I'm, I'm the first to admit that the story that I had to tell sounds insane, especially when you jump straight to the conclusion. So, it's probably going to be a long video. Uh, I don't really have anything planned. I'm just going to kind of describe it as I understand it, as I go along, so you can understand where my madness came from. To help me through this, I am enjoying a glass of red wine and uh, some wine black and mild, so you will, uh, you will get to enjoy the irony later. I do hope. I do know, actually. Alright. About a month ago, I, uh, well, let me back a little bit, a little bit further than that. I've had lifelong issues with depression and, uh, what they would call a panic disorder. Uh, these things have followed me around my entire life. Uh, I used to be pretty much your textbook case manic depressive. I would have super highs where I, you know, woo, rule the world, woo, super highs. Uh, and then, of course, I would have the, <coughs> the corresponding dep depressive lows. Uh, it had been especially bad ever since my, uh, fiancé left me, uh, about five years ago, roughly. Uh, it was not a loss I was prepared for, it was not a loss I handled well, uh, and it, it more or less left me, left me bedridden, depressed, uh, in one way or another. Uh, I kind of powered through it working on, uh, a website that I made, had an idea for, and spent way too damn long making, uh, and never made any money off of it because it doesn't have any commercials or ads or anything, because I've always hated consumerism. It just, it, it, it's a bunch of noise to me, it's always been a bunch of noise to me, so now it's extra loud noise to me. Um, Alright, so I'd been bedridden depressed for a long time, and then about a month ago, I just uh, felt this presence inside of me that basically said, you know, get up, you have things to learn. And I found myself very attracted to uh, conspiracy. And, you know, I've always been someone who likes to look at the facts and think for myself. And, to be perfectly honest, like many people, uh, all these horrible events that have happened in our past, I've always just accepted the official story and not questioned it. Because, you know, like everyone else, these were her I was scared. These were horrific events. Uh, and I was looking for someone to blame to help me feel better. And that is, that is natural. That is, that is normal. Um... But my more left-brain, curious, uh, you know, rebellious, hippie, bohemian self, uh, once I really started digging into the facts of the matter, I kept seeing such glaring, you know, omissions in the official story, and they are so obvious to me in retrospect. You know, 9-11, <coughs> two planes did not bring down seven World Trade Center buildings. No. Uh, JFK, a lone gunman, did not shoot 12 bullets or something. There were a lot of shots fired. Um, you know, Robert Kennedy, a, a lone gunman, did not shoot 13 shots, which the audio recording reveals. Um, you know, you, you kind of, you get the idea that you, you have the same themes repeated over and over. You have the lone gunman. Um, you know, the lone gunman is always an amazing, amazing shot. You always have a suspect that is named and captured uh, almost immediately in these, in these quote-unquote terrorist acts. Um, and these are just some of the patterns I've noticed, but, uh, the two most telling events, which are thankfully also two of the most highly documented and discussed events, are 9-11 and the assassination of JFK. Now, on 9-11, there is a lot of internal debate about, uh, oh, there's nanothermite found, and, um, oh, it, it was just fire, that's the official story, right, it was just just fire, because asymmetrical damage can cause symmetrical collapse, right? That's how physics works? No. So, I kept searching and searching for an explanation to what happened to those buildings that truly made sense to me, and I eventually realized that the nanothermite was left there intentionally to be found. We were meant to find the nanothermite. It was meant to be found to create distrust in the U.S. government. That is why the nanothermite was left there, because it was meant to be traced back 
to the labs that could produce it, and there is only a select few labs that could produce it. So the nanothermite itself is a false flag. Then I came across the work of uh, Dr. Judy Wood, thanks to the recommendation of Jesse Ventura. Uh, love Jesse Ventura. I must admit, when he ran for governor, I was like, what, the wrestler? The wrestler's gonna run for governor? But nothing comes out of that man's mouth but the goddamn truth, and uh, I love anyone, everyone, who just speaks the truth, just speaks the truth. He's not an asshole about it, he is just blunt. And that is, he is, if you want a shining example of a man, Jesse Ventura is, is a good man to pick. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, he turned me on to the, uh, the research of Dr. Judy Wood. And it was Dr. Judy Wood's theory that pointed out that the buildings were destroyed on a molecular level. They were destabil destabilized on a molecular level. And, uh, and that really makes sense, because if you look back at the buildings and watch them go down, which I have many, many times, the first movie it should probably remind you of is Independence Day, right? Yeah. Which, I'll go ahead and include this here. There is a fake alien invasion on the way, and I know that sounds ludicrous, but I promise you it is true. 9-11 was alluding to it. See, we were supposed to realize it was space beings after the alien invasion, because that's just another layer of obfuscation that's coming in. It's something else to misdirect you. It's part of the bigger picture. We are watching revelations unfold right now. It doesn't matter if you're Christian. It doesn't matter if you believe in... What you believe doesn't matter. That needs to be very clear. What you believe does not matter. What I believe does not matter. What the enemy believes, that is what matters. And they are reenacting the book of Revelations. The floods are coming, but that's a different story. They're not really coming. Team Love has already won, because I'm here talking about this, and hopefully you will soon be talking about this, and we can all shoo the demons out of our perfect, perfect paradise and go back to the Garden of Eden. I'm going to try to finish my story now after I sip my wine. Realizing the buildings were destabilized on a molecular level was the only plausible explanation for how quickly they went down, for the lack of debris that was around the area, and for the strange damage that happened to cars nearby, but not the trees right next to them. It was a very specific kind of electromagnetic damage. And uh, also, uh, something many people have forgotten about that day was a hurricane that accompanied the attack. And I realize that's an, an odd phrase. This hurricane moved from uh, around the Bermuda Triangle, north by northwest, up into New York City. At the time of the, ta of the attacks, it just kind of hovered around New York City, and then after World Trade Center 7 went down, it started moving off again north by northwest, which is a very peculiar <laughs> behavior pattern for a hurricane, Would, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? If you look at the hurricane pattern for uh, Hurricane Katrina, it looks like it starts somewhere around the Bermuda Triangle and then zips around Florida and aims itself right at New Orleans and it even builds up intensity as it gets closer. It's, it's an aimed weapon, the hurricane. And it's an odd thing to realize because that's not a technology we know about. But I realized long ago I had to stop thinking about technology we knew about and I had to start thinking about technology that could be feasibly possible in our universe. And for a long time I was hung up on aliens because of that idea. And then I realized, no, aliens really were the last false flag to, in fact, demons. Bill Cooper's uh, excellent alien testimony from the 1960s, I think it was the early 60s it came out, um, is basically a metaphorical retelling of angel versus uh, demons in the Bible. It is, you see the same story repeated over and over and over. Anyway, um, the other incredibly telling event would be the assassination of JFK, and there's an excellent documentary that I cannot recommend enough called uh, JFK to 9-11, Everything is a Rich Man's Game. I will, it's, it's on YouTube, I will provide a link to it, it is excellent. Uh, all I ask is when you watch it, every time they talk about the Illuminati, no, they're not talking about people, they are talking about demons. The Illuminati are real, but they are demons. Uh, and it's some of the same demons uh, who've been here for a long, long time, but we won't get into that. Uh, I highly encourage you to watch that documentary. Kennedy was actually shot at by five or six snipers. The uh, sniper who got the fatal shot was actually in a uh, sewage drain in front of the car. If you watch the, the Bruder film, uh, you can see the driver 
stop the car, turn around once to look at JFK, uh, notice that he is still alive, and then after he hears the gunshot, he turns around again and looks, sees that Kennedy has been shot, and then starts driving off the car. So it was a highly coordinated effort, and that was kind of the flaw or the, the giveaway of its plan is just how well coordinated it was. It was way too well coordinated, especially the last volley. Um, <coughs> Each sniper that was set to shoot at Kennedy missed. Uh, I'm thinking uh, divine intervention right there. Um, and so at the last minute, they all fired pretty much at the same time. And Governor, I can't remember his name, but the gentleman who was either in the passenger seat or the, the guy who was in the middle between the president and the driver, Reported is saying that there was so much gunfire that it felt like there was a jet flying directly over their heads. So there was a significant amount of, of force being fired over the car. Um, but yeah, it was a man in the storm drain in the front who got the... That really is the other thing about Kennedy's assassination. There, there are no magic bullets, people. <laughs> there is no such thing as a magic bullet, okay? I'm supposed to be the crazy person here. There is no such thing as a magic bullet. Kennedy got shot from the front, that's why his head went back into the left, back into the left. It really is that simple, don't let people convince you otherwise, if you know this, you are not dumb. But just realizing the amount of coordination and the technology that would be required to uh, make all these things happen, it, it finally, you know, like I said, I was hung up on aliens for a long time, but it finally just dawned on me how ludicrous that was, that even aliens, no matter how advanced or how ancient of a species they may be, could be that possibly well coordinated. Um, and there are a lot of tricks in play, there are a lot of things, you know, time travel is very possible, um, manipulating your senses remotely via your electromagnetic field is very possible, there's a lot of things that are very possible, but uh, that's how I got I mean, that's really how I got my head wrapped around this idea that there were demons. And once I really saw how prevalent the demons are in our society, I freaked out. I was really scared. Um, I had a really strange evening where some really odd things happened, and I'm not going to go too much into that now. Uh, but it was that evening that I was trying to escape my home from the safe sanctuary, or what I thought was safe sanctuary. And the short version of, of the story, the very short version of the story, is God intervened. Uh, he took my directions out of my pocket, out of my pocket, it was just magically suddenly gone. Um, <clears throat> that freaked me out, so I told my roommate who was driving one direction to get off the highway and turn around and drive the other direction in case he was a desert and leave me there. Uh, I honestly went out to the desert to die just because I hadn't realized how much they can't hurt us yet. They really cannot hurt us. I was, I was significantly scared of what they were about to do to me. Uh, but the answer is nothing. They can't do anything. Uh, they didn't kill Jesus. Jesus never died. And while I'm speaking of Jesus, no, I'm, I'm not the second coming of Jesus. Jesus was a man who achieved enlightenment. I don't feel I've achieved enlightenment so much as I had enlightenment thrust upon me. So, I'm in, I'm in the club. I'm in the club, but I'm certainly not Jesus. Jesus was just a man. He loved you like I loved you. I know that is absolutely true, but Jesus is not coming back. There's going to be a fake Jesus coming back in 2022, but not really, because we're not going to get there, because Team Love is already one. Um, I feel I've derailed myself in my story, but, oh, right, uh, I was scared, I went to the desert, I was lost out there for about 24 hours, uh, I had a 12-ounce bottle of water with me, and that is all, I actually took a little uh, headless uh, Siddhartha, I'm not sure if it's a Siddhartha or a Buddha, because it was headless, um, <coughs> with me, this little just wooden ornament I'd had for years, and uh, it's still out there somewhere out there in the desert. <laughs> I lost a lot of things. Uh, lastly, I lost my glasses. I had to replace them with these uh, supermarket glasses just because it's such a part of my identity having them on that I felt so weird uh, having them. Uh, but that's the short version of my story. Uh, when I came home the next day, there was a clone of my mother here. I'm just going to go ahead and end on the weirdest note I possibly could. I got home and uh, my bowels had started emptying themselves and so I had to just run to the toilet and after I did that I needed a shower because I'd been in the desert for 24 hours and uh, I felt pretty gross and drained and I just wanted to feel water on me because I was severely dehydrated and uh, pretty much as soon as I got out of the shower my quote-unquote mother was sitting in my living room waiting for me 
and uh, I knew instantly it wasn't her because you know it's it's my mother you, you know your mother you, you know how your mother feels you know how your mother feels and uh, I just walked up and I simply asked yes or no are you my biological mother and she could not answer yes to this simple question because they cannot lie they cannot lie and uh, I basically told her she was welcome to stay but I was not gonna entertain any pretense that she was my actual mother and uh, she left she calmly walked out the door pulled out her cell phone called somebody and uh, drove away shame you know I miss my mother I'd like to see my mother again but that was that was not my mother so please people it really is that easy uh, I swear there's a logical path if you have any questions please ask I will clarify anything you'd like me to I will try to point you at resources uh, here on YouTube because there is a ton of great knowledge out here just waiting for you to not pay attention to the bullshit. Uh, I love you dearly. I, I love you dearly. I, I, I want you to see how beautiful this world is. I want you to know how good food tastes, how good food really tastes. And I, I don't want you to have to go to a day job anymore. I don't want you to worry about your bank account or your retirement plan or your government. All these things are going away. All these things are going away. All we have to do is, is expose the demons. We don't have to hurt them. We don't have to attack them. We just have to let them know that we know. That's it. Campaign of awareness. Love you all.